I title how to obtain restoration how to obtain restoration father we thank you this morning the entrance of your word bringeth forth light and understanding to you the simple heal the sick save the oppressed deliver those that are bound and take all the glory Father, while I teach this word this morning, I bind any contrary spirit. I reduce them this morning to nothing. Holy Spirit, give each person what they need and take all the glory. We covenant with you that all the glory and honor belongs to you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And let every son and daughter of God say amen. amen. That amen looks too weak. Amen. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. If you are at the back, I don't expect you to be there. Except you are using the bathroom or you have a baby you are attending to because God is a spirit he loves order well since I have the screen on let me use the screen the scripture say in Joel chapter 2 verse 25 say and I will Restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. There are different forms of satanic attacks that God identifies with and he expects you to pay attention to. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the plumber worm, my great army which I sent among sometimes, God allows some things to happen to you. Is God an evil God? No. Every child of God has been given the power of Christ to walk as Christ on earth. You might be wondering what that means. That means every one of us are endowed with the grace of Christ. That's why John, 1 John says, as he is, so are we in this world. But you never go further if Christ is not fully resident in you. I will say this for the benefit of those ones that are grown up. You might not like Jesus now. You might not want him at a young age. Because the norm now is, I want to play, I want to do, I want to live my life. But there is a scripture waiting for you one day. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? On that day, you will find out two things. You have wasted your life and you have given your hopes to the devil. And on that day, he will drag you to the dungeons of hell. I'm talking to the younger ones that think they know. When God is talking about restoration, God is talking about something you have lost. How many of you have lost somebody? When God is talking about restoration, he's talking about something that is dear to you that you lost. And you can't physically get it back. No matter how much you try. There are things in your life that no matter how much you do or how much you pray, 
it takes a higher grace to restore that thing back to you. And there are people you will meet in your, your day-to-day life that when you look at them, you will know they are going nowhere until Jesus comes into their heart. It will be a waste for you to know that only God can give you back hope. And when he's looking for you, are not there. If you read that story, the prophet Joel said, the, is, the Israelite had backslidden from God. And any time you backslide from God, you will lose something you can't gain, except God intervenes. <laughs> that is why it's called Covenant Day of what? Of restoration. Don't deceive yourself. Don't. There is nothing you have lost in life that Christ can give you back. But there are conditions of getting those things back. Now, when you talk about covenant, what are you trying to talk about? From my little understanding of covenant, covenant is an agreement between two persons with stipulations. A covenant is a relationship between two parties who make binding promises to each other. That is, when Christ comes into your heart, he makes a promise to you that what he will do for you. But there's another promise God wants you to make for him so that he knows you are serious. You see, a lot of people come to church, get, don't get me wrong when I say this. They want the blessing, but they don't want the conditions. You can't keep the blessing without a condition. It, I'm telling you the truth. Because after a while, Satan will come back and steal it. He's very good at it. He has been here for more than 6,000 years. He knows the trick of the trade. He knows every look and corner on earth because when Adam fell, Adam legally gave him a right to operate on earth. If you look at the book of Job, the Bible says, the angels of God gathered. And Satan came. Why couldn't God stop him? I will tell you why. He had a legal right. Because the first Adam gave him right to roam around. Remember what he told Jesus. When he saw Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. And in Luke. He said. This I will give unto you. Because it was freely given to me. That's why he has the right. And God asks him, he said, Satan, where comest thou? He said, I'm coming from two and four. He doesn't have a job. His number one job is to steal. And he has been stealing for years. And he's good at it. He won't steal your destiny. Amen. That amen sounds too weak. He won't steal your destiny. This destiny means God's pathway for your life. When he got to the garden, the first thing he noticed, he noticed that Adam was not close to Eve. He sat down and studied them. That's a thief. A thief will come now and look around and say, how can I penetrate this environment? What kind of weapon should I come with? What should I say? And how should I say it? If the thing gets wrong, how do I escape? That's the devil. He's very good at it. But some of you think he's, 
because they call him the devil, he's in hell. He's never there. The scripture says he walketh about true and full. He's on this earth. And let me tell you something about him. He knows your background. Each time he meets you, where do you think computer came from? Do you know in the realm of the spirit there's something he called you have a foreknowledge about the thing because you're a spirit being. Adam sold it to them. You see that thing God had where he can read your mind, your, your mind a mile away. Adam had it in the beginning. So when he looks at you, he look, he's looking at you and says, the first thing he wants to see is where are you going? He now next to say, whose God are you serving? Are you serving him or are you serving Jehovah Almighty? If he finds that you are serving God, he comes against you stronger. Because he and God broke a pact. He hates God. God's kingdom is against him. So, I, so when you look at this picture, you will understand that there is somebody unseen. Invisible, you don't see. Knows much about you, you don't know about him. Most people say the devil has horn. He's in hell. He's not there. He's not there. If he's in hell, why are they having accidents everywhere here on earth? If he's in hell, why are they having war in Ukraine right now? He's not there. He's on earth. So, but the scripture makes us to understand though we walk in the flesh we do no war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are mighty true god in the pulling down of stronghold god does not blesses his children with sicknesses and disease he doesn't it's not his intention that you are poor. You just lack knowledge of how to get it. And if you have failed so many times in your life, it's not God. Because when God sent Jesus here, before even Jesus started work, he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Now the question is that he had not even done one thing. God has placed an approver. That means the Holy Ghost inside of him had only determined his destiny. That is why as a child of God, you can't make it without God. I'm not going to lie to you. You can't make it without the Almighty. That what I'm trying to say is that when you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, it gives you an edge over the powers of darkness. I'm telling you, there are some things God would pre-warn you before the devil comes. Because he sees your future. He plans your life. But many of you are playing with that plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For the thoughts that I think towards who are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give who? And expect it. That means God had already planned your life. Stop trying to replan it. Because if I talk about planning your life, I will show you some scripture. Before you came here, he had already determined that you are blessed. What blessed means that empowered to succeed. <laughs> that means I can't fail. Wherever I go, I'm a distributor of heaven's abundance. Whatever I say, God will honor. Whoever I meet, I become a blessing to them. That's what God sent you here for. But until you read your Bible to understand and know, no wonder the scripture said, the truth you know will set you free. Many are hanging on what they think they can get for themselves. A man can receive nothing except it being given to him from above. Are you listening to me, somebody? 
I say, are you listening to me, somebody? Your destiny is about to turn around. Things are going to change in your life. You will notice something this week that the supernatural hand is telling you what to do and what not to do. If you say amen to that, something will happen to you. God wants to restore. But there are boundaries. There are stipulations. You can't just wake up and do anything and you expect God to bless you. No. God is a God of order. That's why when you serve him, he tells you, serve me in spirit, not in flesh and experience. You can't use your experience to serve God. Experience means something someone else encountered. Experience is not always the best teacher. Because if he's a best teacher, God will have said, use experience. But he said, in spirit and in truth, what is truth? Truth is the original intent of God concerning a situation. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking. God intends for all of us to live long. But you can't live long if you are smoking. Am I right? You cut, short, you cut short your life. Right? Doctor, Sister Hope, is that not true? That's true. You smoke 10 packs a day and you expect to make 100 and something. It won't work. It won't. I'm telling you the truth. There are stipulations. There are things you can't do. Because this is a machine. If you clean it, it will produce. But if it's junky, it won't give you the, fight, the full energy you are looking for. I'm not lying to you. Life is like a machine, but you are the highest form of machine God sent here. God gave you a mind to think. God gave you a leg to walk. God even gave you a mind to reason out some things. That is why he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is the superior mind that leaves you on top always. My goodness. You will not fail in 2022. The enemy will not put you in a spot where you will compromise your faith. For your shame you shall receive double. If that amen is like thunder, something will happen. I will show you some people God restored. You may make a mistake now. And in your mind you think you have failed. Mm -mm. No. Because you serve a mighty God. He watches over you day and night. He's not sleeping. The scriptures say, He that keepeth Israel, neither sleepeth. He doesn't, he doesn't even go to bed. Because the day he closes his eye, you are gone. But he can't take that chance. Now, give me one reason why somebody will go to the den of the lion and lion refuse to eat him. Is that normal? That's not normal. Look at this picture. He was put in a little basket on a crocodile Nile. The crocodiles refused to eat him. Why? He had God's plan in him. You see, when God watches over you, he watches over you with all his heart to protect and to preserve. No wonder David says in Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. He shall say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. Because God has proven to him he can trust him. Which God are you putting your mind on? It's, it will show on the day of adversity. It will show when you are going through troubles. It will show because God, if God is not with you, you will fail. Are you listening to me, somebody? I say, are you listening to me? Listen, there are things in your life, I will tell you, I'm not going to stay for long. There are things in your life you can't change. 
Stop trying to prove you can change it. A woman that has given birth to a child can never go back to become single. Except the child dies. You can't change that because you have experienced that experience. It will live with you for the rest of your life. A man that has touched money and suddenly becomes poor, he knows the usefulness of money. Even though he has lost it. But whatever you have lost in the number of years you have been on this earth, I guarantee you today is coming back to you. I say it's coming back to you. I say it's coming back to you. I say it's coming back to you. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Ladies and gentlemen, you are special. You are so special, Jesus had to leave heaven. You are so special. He had to die the death of a criminal. Beaten and battered. God could not behold him. He turned his face. <laughs> because of you. God came down in God. Took flesh in Mary's womb. And become Jesus. Can you imagine? He took the mystery of his kingdom. Took himself from God. Strip himself of God to live in you because he loves you. Amen. Why will you fail? Amen. Why? It's the devil. If you listen to him, he will keep lying to you. Stop letting him tell you what to do. Amen. Many of you are more used to the, what the world says than what the Bible says. Because if you read this Bible, it's a fake comment by hearing. By hearing the word of God. The more word of God you hear, the more you look like him. Amen. The more of him you look at, the more power God gives you to operate in that level. That is the problem with the church. The church does not know there is a weapon in his hand that is greater than life. I'll tell you why I said this. Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But no little eye and jot of that Bible you are carrying will pass away. That means that word has been here before you came. That word was in eternity before anything became anything. That word will be with you when you, that word will be the word that will judge you on the last day. But people don't learn to read it. Rather you want to tell people your experiences. Jesus said, the word that I speak unto you, your spirit and your life. I prophesy to you this morning, a change is coming your way. I say a change is coming your way. It will affect your destiny. It will affect your health. It will affect your marriage. It will affect your children. It will affect your grandchildren. It will affect where you even go to work. If you say amen, it is coming to you. God told me one morning, he says, never is intention for us to be sick. Peter tried it and it worked. The lame man on the gate of beautiful, silver and gold have I none. The man thought, what do you have? What do you have? He thought, John was going to pull out silver. He said, I don't have it. I don't know if, if John has it. He said, but such that I have. Lay your hands on where you are. You are sick now. There's a flow. In Jesus' name, let heat come on that area. Amen. And let the healing power of God flow. Amen. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Amen. I say be healed. I say be healed. Amen. I say be healed. Amen. He told him, say, see what I'm going, have I known? <laughs> what does that mean? He said, I don't have what you are thinking I have. But I have something higher than what you cannot think. Healing. Shandala Baba. It's coming upon you. It's coming upon you. I say it's coming upon you. 
Healing in your mind is coming upon you. Healing in your body is coming upon you. I say healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I take authority and dominion over that sickness. Be bound. Come out. Come out. Come out. I say come out in the name of Jesus. Anything that is broken be repaired. Any place in your body that is not functioning come alive. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 My God. The covenant says, if you serve the Lord, he will bless thy bread and thy water and take away sickness from your midst. That's what God said. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. God said it. All you need to do, believe it. Don't think twice whether it's there. It's there. He said he will heal your body. He's healing you now. He's healing you right now. Lift your, wave your hands. He's healing you. He's healing you. He's healing you. I said I was going to pray for you. Don't put the camera. In the name of Jesus Christ, the pain in your body is gone. It's gone. The pain in your back is gone. Amen. The pain in your mind is gone. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You will notice your bones are start to come together. Amen. You are healed. This morning, I really didn't come to preach. I came here to bless. Amen. But I had to say something to activate your faith. Amen. Amen. Amen? Whatever it's trying to take over your life is broken right now. Amen. Whatever you are fighting against day and night that you have not gotten success, you will live here with that success. Amen. Some of you, your life is turning around right now. Amen. My life, say, my life is turning around. Say, my life is turning around. My life is turning around. My life is turning around. My destiny is turning around. Say, I'm receiving it right now. Say, I'm receiving it right now. I'm receiving it right now. Say, I'm receiving it right now. Where is Ro? I'm receiving it right now. I need row and I am receiving it right now. Say, I receive it right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I'm hearing names. I'm hearing names. Be healed in Jesus' name. I'm hearing names. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm receiving my healing right now. I'm receiving my breakthrough right now. Where is jail? I'm receiving my breakthrough right now. I'm receiving my breakthrough right now. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. In Jesus' name, there is breakthrough coming your way right now. 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 Amen. Anything in your body that nobody knows is operating there, I command it to leave you. Amen. Shout that amen as you know it. Amen. Stand up and touch your whole body. You will find that something is taking place in your life. Holy Ghost, Holy Father, that covenant is working right now. If you have somebody in your family, call his name while you are touching yourself. Because that healing is going to transfer to them. That healing is going to transfer to them. 
that healing is going to transfer to them. That healing is transferring to them right now. No longer will you have a broken heart. No longer will you suffer disappointment. No longer will you suffer disgrace. No longer will you suffer failure. No longer will you suffer whatever the enemy is throwing against you right now. You are free. I say you are free. I say you are free. If I were you, I would do what I have not done before. You shake that body. Shake it because God is healing it. There's an angel that just came and is taking away those things away. Your limits have been taken away. Your limits have been taken away. Limits in your mind is taken away. Limits in your body is taken away. Anything that's a limit to you has been taken away now. If I shout amen like thunder, something will happen. Shake that body. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Because you are being healed right now. There's somebody. There is, there's somebody. Yeah. Come, um, little mama. Oh, Mario, come, come. I'm hearing little children. Children, little children. Little children. Little children. Little, come, little, um. Jesus, let me go to them. You are healed. Amen. Nothing is going to affect you negatively. Amen. You will grow up in the knowledge of God. Amen. Come here. Nothing will take over your health. Amen. Nothing will take over your destiny. Amen. I rebuke that spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I rebuke that spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not lose your mind. You will not lose your thoughts. Amen. You will not lose your ability to reason. Amen. Anything that you were born with that is from birth, I correct it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I correct it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I transfer to you sound mind, Amen. clear thoughts, Amen. good focus. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 Lift up your hands and begin to bless the Lord. 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 Bless the King of Kings. Bless the Lord of Lord. He's working. Things are changing. It's working. Nashata Kalaba. Come on, lift up your hands. Pay attention to yourself. And lift up your hands and begin to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. It's in my mouth right now. Shout what God has I'm healed. Shout to say, I am healed. Say I, Say, I am healed. Say, I am healed. While you are shouting it, touch any part of your body. Because God is healing you right now. If you have somebody at home that is sick, call their name and begin to say they are healed. Because this, there is no distance in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. If you call it forth, it will come forth. If you call it forth, it will come forth. God is a spirit. It cannot be stopped. God is a wonderful spirit. No man can hinder him. God is a spirit. He moves according to his will. God is a spirit. Wherever you are, you are healed. Those of you that are watching me on the telecast right now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be 
Heal in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The power of God heal you. The anointing of God heal you. God's grace touch you. Whatever is wrong with you is being corrected. I command that power that is fighting you to stop fighting you right now. I resist their force. I resist their power. I stop their influence. I stop their maneuver. I command their power broken by the authority of the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare right now you are healed in the name of Jesus. Cancer is gone. Fibroid is gone. Any blood disease is gone. Whatever is wrong with you is gone right now. Be totally whole in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to bless his name. Come on. Bless his name. Come on. Bless his name. 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 You will hear the testimony. I will hear your 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 testimony. Your testimony shall fill the earth. Your testimony shall fill this ground. I will hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony. Jesus. Jesus. It won't disjoint your, your jaw. In Jesus' name. Come on, shout. I receive it. Say it one more time while you know it. Say it again. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. Hold somebody. Hold anybody by your side. Hold anybody. This week will produce you good results. You started this week with God. God will finish it with you. You will not lack what to eat, what to drink, and what to do this week. Amen. Trouble is far away from you this week. Amen. Disease is far away from you this week. Amen. Any disappointing news is far away from you this week. Amen. This week, whatever you have been looking for, you will find it. Amen. I say you will find it. Some of you, when you get to your jobs tomorrow, promotion is waiting for you. Those of you who are struggling in business, no more struggle, no more struggle, no more struggle in the name of Jesus. You will have a reason to thank the Lord after today. If that amen sound like thunder, you will receive it right now. Whoever is owing you will pay you this week. Shout, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. From now on, your star will not die. I say your star will not die. I say from now on, your star will not die. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Don't your neighbor say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. You'll be ten times stronger this week. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. All the hidden enemies around you will be exposed. Shout amen on that part. Shout amen on that part. There's an angel dropping gift into your hands this hour. You can't see them. It's not giving to you grace to see them. There's an angel dropping gift in your hands right now. He's dropping it. Some of you, when the time you get home, you will find that something you've been looking for all these years is right looking at you. I receive it is what you should say. Say, I receive it. Shout it louder. And if you know you have received it, give Jesus a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Turn to your neighbor and say, All my limits are removed. Tell your neighbor, My limits have been removed. 
Say, I'm a new man now. I'm a new person right now. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. If you know you have received it, shout amen three times. Give him a hand if you can. Give him a hand. Amen. You may be seated. I told you the service is not going to be for long. God has taken away our reproach. Anything that was a reproach to you has been taken away. I... On this day of covenant, if you ask God for one thing, he will give you three. Shout amen. amen. Say, how does that happen? God multiplies. If you ask God for two, he will give you 12. Amen. Say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I didn't plan to, be, to stay here for long. What I've just given to you right now, you will see. I want to bless God for all of you who have been fasting. You have stood strong for the fasting. We are seeing the results of the fasting now. Please do me a favor. Don't just go and eat until the next fasting. Try and attempt your own. And watch God developing your power. I want to welcome our guests. Those of them who came from afar and near. Church, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Somebody say, we lo tell them you love them. Say, let them hear you. you. Tell them, let them know you truly do. You. Maybe you need to stand up and go give them a hug of love. Come on, stand up wherever you are. Stand up. Just go give somebody a hug of love. That we miss you. Welcome back. We love you. We miss you. Welcome back. We love you. You have been in our heart all this while. You have been in our heart all this while. God bless you. Come and give them a good love, a hug of love. Say, welcome. We've been waiting for you all these years. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. My God is a good God. My God is a good God. My God is a wonderful Father. Well, bless God for all the African words that I'm seeing here this morning. They are sweeping the floor. Where is the jailer come <laughs> hallelujah to the lamp of God we will take an offering before we leave we are not going to stay as a matter of fact as a matter of fact we are not going to stay long because the rice is ready the chicken are ready to be to be the chickens are all say come eat me how many of you are ready to devour the chickens i'm not going to keep you long you are going to eat the chicken don't worry the chicken is going to go in your stomach very soon but before the chicken gets in your stomach we got to give god an offering An offering of thanksgiving that it took us through this whole season and brought.